Excellent. Well, let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at it. Um, yeah. Beautiful cover. Fantastic. A lot of great shots from David here that we'll take a look at uh, in a moment. But what, what's, what's the cover shot here, Ali, this, this month? Local beach, Castellejo, uh, for obvious reasons, because that's yeah. a little rock out in the sea that looks like a castle. But if you look, um, I don't think you zoom in, the right hand side face always reminds me of like um, a monster. Can you see it? Yes, and we had this as an interior shot in the magazine, yeah. I think, previously, didn't yes, we? We, we? We visited like this beautiful place. Yeah, yeah, and quite rightly so. Um, a, a, an icon uh, of the uh, geography of the landscape in the Algarve here. Um, and, uh, yes, more photographs from Dave then of the fireworks here. They're well captured, aren't they? Most yeah. people went out on the 31st of December with their mobile phones and thought, I know, I'll capture the fireworks. Most of, <laughs> most of us have got terrible video and stores <laughs> of the fireworks these are brilliant these are absolutely brilliant yeah they're lovely i thought i put them although it's february now it's still nice to look back but that's calvero and i think they do a fantastic display with live music you'll see some of the pictures but um yeah the firework display there's something amazing about because they went right out on the cliffs so he could shoot back so you've actually got the village as well as the fireworks because i think that's the other thing most people are shooting out towards the sea of so course. you don't actually get the village so it's right um, did he get back in time, though, to, to eat 12 raisins? Uh, no, he was really busy with his camera. <laughs> he had to eat his raisins on his own on a rock. Right, OK, well, good effort, Dave. That's fantastic. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Like, little, these are like, the, on the left here, these are like quills, aren't they? Quills mm -hmm. are, it's mm -hmm. buried into the... Yeah. It's, um, it's into clever. The it's when you know what you're doing with a proper camera, you actually, I don't know, I think he's a three or four second um, yeah. shot. So you actually yeah. get some of it sharp, but you get some movement as well. It's uh, there's good. a real trick to getting that right for sure. And not everyone with a good camera is a good photographer. Let's face it. But uh, the, the, these are these are superb. Are we? And we're returning to the beach now. Um, who who have we got in these pictures? Oh, they're just a couple. Dave did a engagement shoot for them. They're from Canada. Oh, so very nice. We wish them all the best if they're watching this. But I just wanted to share some of the shots because that's another thing Dave does. Obviously. Is, what called lifestyle or portrait shoots but which beach? it's always special isn't it it's lovely yeah which beach is this local one amarera yeah it's a, no no it's not actually i i tell fibs where did he go he went down to i can't remember where he went he okay. was it will be one of two out by Val, villa de bishbo so Cordoama would be my guess. I'll have to okay. I'll get him on that one. That's and this a, is Amarera here, isn't it? Yeah, this is Amarera. Isn't it beautiful? This is our it local is. beach. It's Are stunning, you? isn't it? Got it to yourself? Or did you ask everyone to just move out of the way? Whilst you, whilst <laughs> no, you're... Dave always gets upset because there were footprints. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's not your beach, darling. Other what? people can walk on it. How dare to... they spoil my yeah, photos outrageous. with footprints? Outrageous. How dare they? <laughs> but that's all one shoot. That's the same sky in one evening, isn't it? Uh, I just love the way the sky changes so quickly out here. It's beautiful. Right. Okay. It's Ali, I've, I've got a little bit of a rumble your end. Um, I don't think it's dietary related. Um, I, th I think it might be your table and your microphone on your table that's rumbling a little bit as you as you speak. I, it's not a big deal, but if um, if is it not is it not us? Is it, is is it I not, think maybe, it's uh, uh, Ali maybe, David or something. On that. Ali, maybe I'm blaming you, and it might be um, uh, Ian or Fabrizio all along uh, with this. It rumbling. could be their neighbours. <laughs> Say no more. It's before ten o'clock. After all, up as, uh, up as bikers and they get on to it. Yeah, in the morning. How healthy that is. I live in a house. I'm not in a condo, so you can't blame me. Uh, okay. this. Okay, let's see. Let's see how we get on with that. So we're in the studio with Leanne Byram here. Um, tell us about Leanne, if you will. Yeah, she's great. She's South African, but she lives over here in the Algarve and she does really fantastic um, wildlife paintings. I really like her work. There's something very special um, and clever about it. She goes out on safari, takes her own photographs, comes back and then paints. Right. Uh, look at that elephant. They're beautiful. They're very, yes. very cleverly painted. Really good. And uh, I take it may well be at this uh, Vision Art Fair. Are you going to be there as well? This looks like a big um, date in the di in the diaries of... Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not on that one. It's um, Silge in March, but um, I'm not going to be there. On that. But lots of other artist friends will be there, including Leanne. So it's always a good one to go to. But uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying actually starting to interview other artists out here and uh, really finding out 
particularly why they paint and how they paint. I think people like to know that. They want to know what's going on on that canvas and what happens in the studio. Um, yes. How do you get to that finished piece? And how do you know when to stop? It's a really big question to ask an artist because you can and, uh, really quickly overdo a painting if you're not are there Are there similarities, universal themes, or are they all very different? No, very different. I'm always fascinated how much people either sketch out beforehand or just go for it. It's the same yeah. with writing. Some people plan their entire book chapter by chapter and then fill it in almost. And others, literally, they call them pantsters, flying off the seat of your pants. You just start writing. You have no right. idea where the book's going to go. Yeah, yeah um, that's right. Same thing yeah. with painting, really. It's quite interesting. I think editors are quite useful for pantsters, aren't they? Like, where is it? <laughs> what do you call this? You mentioned Mrs. So-and-so in Chapter 3. What happened to her? You never mentioned yes. her again. That kind of thing. Yeah, can be handy. <laughs> for sure. I'm trying to remember who the great elephant artist is, and I'm seeing here um, that uh, Leanne is entering the David Shepherd Wildlife. David Shepherd. Yeah. He was famous, wasn't he, for, oh. uh, for for the for the elephant portraits? Um, beautiful, beautiful. Back, work. Back. He was, yeah, stunning artist, really, yeah. really talented. So very yeah. popular in the UK, those, yeah, mm. as I recall. Yeah, oh, absolutely. it is carnival time, and um, yeah. well, Dave's great photographs here, uh, no doubt. And um, how are, are you going along? Are you a carnival fan? Uh, Dave will go. I don't think Zara, bless her, would cope with that much noise and people. That would be just too much for the poor girl. Um, we used to take Cat the dog. She was quite happy just watching everything go by. Um, yeah. Zara's a little bit more nervous. But, yeah, Dave will be there. We've, we always go to Lule. Um, that's the biggest one, really, in the Algarve. I think it's the 11th, 12th and 13th this year. Um, well, you have to watch very carefully. Sometimes they do Saturday. Um, miss out Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and sometimes it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So right. Dave went on Saturday once and it was Sunday. So that, that went down well. So he's got to go back. So we make sure we get the dates in the diary this year. But Lule's, I mean, the carnival's all over Portugal, obviously, but well, it's Lule a great is, town, is isn't brilliant. It? Lovely chance to visit a lovely, lovely Algarve town there. Not a beach town, but a superb, yeah. superb little town with a wonderful market, um, yes. as I recall there. Yeah. We'll yeah. ask you about Carnival in Lisbon in, in just a moment, Ian and mm -hmm. Fabrizio. But look at this. Turns out there's, there is a religious uh, undercurrent to Carnival. Carnival in Portugal mm -hmm. is an annual festival that ends on Shrove Tuesday. It's often the last thing to be mentioned, isn't it? The sort of religious uh, origins. Yeah. Uh, let's do that now. Called Terça Feira Gorda in Portuguese, mm -hmm. the day before Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent. Carnival evolved from the historical and Trudeau celebration, a time of festivities before the somber Lenten period. That's when everyone ran out of food, wasn't it? And was hoping for some more to be grown in the spring. Um, in the olden days, this festivity would start on Lean Sunday, Domingo Magro. This is a good guy to buying milk as well, isn't it? Magro and Gordo. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly one week before Fat Sunday, Domingo Gordo. Lent in Portugal is known as Acarejma, and it starts on Ash Wednesday, Quarta Feira de Cinzas, and finishes on Holy Thursday, Quinta Feira Santa. Many Portuguese Catholics will follow the tradition of not eating meat every Friday during Lent, preferring the, the fish, presumably, with the word carnival said, of course, there's a carne uh, and antecedent, is that the word there, um, or, or, or prefix said to be from the latin carne lavare remove meat or the expression carnival farewell meat which is why everyone indulges mm -hmm. in their favorite cakes and food during carnival people seem to indulge in all of their favorite activities in carnival as far as i can see here in portugal they even have a phrase for it no entrudo como se tudo uh, during entrudo carnival everything is eaten Yes, spicy times. And we do associate it more with um, Brazil, don't we, in Carnival. But it's a strong mm -hmm. tradition here in Portugal, all yeah. over the country. What shape does it take in Lisbon, uh, Fabrizio? Do, 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 do you well, know? That? It's quite, <clears throat> it seems to be quite low key. I mean, whereas you see a lot of kids around, sort of, you know, school, sort of doing something, there isn't. Yeah, so I, far, I couldn't I've recall never seen a, a big parade or something that, like, it happens in the Santos Popular, for example. A lot That's of people right. That's. To. Yes, exactly. that's the big one, isn't it? In the Santa Clara yeah. processions yeah. at that time of year. Okay. Um, certainly, a lot of people we've know have sort of said, you know, I think Torres Vedras is the very famous one, isn't it? Yep. Which it is. Quite, it uh, is which is the close a lot of people yeah. go to visit. Yeah. And I think there is a quite exciting. But in yeah. this one, you know, that's I'll get back to you because I, I just, yeah. um, I, I, I did not know of any sort of main yeah. event. Yeah. Anyway, we have in Italy all the same sort of religious undertone to carnival. So the same yeah. stuff that you said is the same. Yeah, 
Excellent. All right. Well, thank you for that bit of history on on that or background, uh, Ali. Um, just how difficult is it to take a photograph like the one on the right? <laughs> is, it, is that? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You've got, you've got a lot of eyes that could be closed, not least dogs that might want to sniff each other's bottoms whilst uh, preparing for such a, a visual feast. Uh, how, how is this done? Do you, do we, is, this isn't what the dates are taking, or is it? No, there's a lovely story behind this. One of our regular readers of the newsletter, she went out to Alvor on the boardwalk one afternoon. Yeah. And so I don't know, I think I've got the picture in on the next page for you. So I think if you skip forward a page. Yeah. Um, okay. I think... Pretty sure I, yeah, there he is. The, on the left there is Schwao Ferreira, who's a local Portuguese guy in the Algarve, who is wonderful with animal rescue. Um, mm. But the, the lady literally, Janice, was walking and she sent me a message going, she sent me the picture and said, I, I can't believe it. I was on the boardwalk and I saw this man with his dogs and one dog's got a wheelchair and there was a dog with three legs and one of the dogs was blind. And I literally just went back and went, that's Schwau. <laughs> I knew who it was instantly. It had to be. Um, and bless him, since a young age, he has rescued dogs and he now works for ARA, A-R-A, the Animal Rescue Algarve Charity. So I thought, I've got to interview him, haven't I? Because she said, oh, I'd love to know more about this man and his dogs. Because if the dog has literally three legs or it's blind, he tends to take it home and it becomes part of his family. Um, oh, and him and the charity work so hard to rescue and rehome dogs. So it was a, an easy interview to make, but uh, it was I've... a wonderful bloke. Really good. Oh, really a, lovely, a lovely local legend. And it sounds yeah. like he's been doing this from an early age as well. He's, he's just loved dogs. Yeah, I first remember him. We did, there was an animal um, dog show as part of one of the fairs in the summer here, one of the big ones. And Dave did the photography for the dog show in the ring. And I had a stand and I, I remember it's the first time I've actually painted live because I was actually doing a pet portrait. Um, and people was literally looking over my shoulder and frightening the life out of me because I suddenly turned around and, oh, where did you come from? It was like man leaning over my shoulder. Um, but the competition, whoever won the best in show for the dog um, each day, I offered a free pet portrait and Schwab, his dog won one of the days. So I actually got to know him when he was a teenager of about, 14, 15, probably. Um, wow. So I painted him then. So I've known him since then. But it was just funny when Janice sent me this picture and I went, ah, I know who that is. That's Shrao. He's an amazing well, lovely, guy. Lovely yeah. young man. That is fantastic. Yeah, I think uh, the the Nords, Casa de Nord, uh, have been in Lule recently. We enjoyed a very nice afternoon coffee and pastry mm -hmm. repast there. And I think on a somewhat quieter day than you, you will experience at Carnival time, which they're gearing up for. What's yeah. the, did... did um, do you know the actual date for the carnival um, there, Ali? Yeah, 11th, 12th and 13th, because uh, Tuesday will be the 13th. That's uh, well, right. just pancake day, obviously, if you're British. But Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Shrove Tuesday. Um, so, yeah, the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Um, I got one other thing. I didn't realise Lule Carnival, most of the floats are actually charities. Um, and the, I mean, they sell thousands of tickets thousands of people go to this each day but 50 percent of all the profit from tickets is shared between those charities that put the floats together which i didn't realize so i thought that's a nice thing to know as well idea, isn't it? Isn't it? yeah very yeah. good very good yeah. uh, local community uh, at its best there Absolutely. i would say yeah that's a bit scary isn't it to see <laughs> to see a street food truck with best dog in town oh, taste no. Right. Couldn't resist, couldn't resist that photo. Yeah, it was a birthday last month. Five years old. Bless her. Look at her. Out of range. Five last month. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. best dog in town. Official. <laughs> Is that something you would eat? I suspect not. No, I can't eat them. I don't think Dave would be that. It's not my favourite food. I have to be honest. There's much better local sure. Portuguese food than a hot dog. But uh, couldn't resist yeah. that sign though. That okay. was uh, <laughs> All right. The, the doggest. Right. Okay. The Spanish water dog. Well, this is very specialist. Um, and uh, how how much interest is there in Spanish water dogs in Portugal? Does does it put Portuguese people off the fact that it's got a Spanish in the name of the breed? <laughs> yeah, the bilingual. You're all right. It's fine. Um, no, I just thought it was interesting because uh, I got a really nice review back from someone who sent me an email because they read Cat the Dog, but she's actually the author of this Spanish water dog book, which is like the book about the breed um, and not many people know about them I mean I think most people know the Portuguese water dog yes um, and you've got an Italian one as well the legato um, which one of them won um, Crufts last year so that's become oh, quite right. famous now but okay. the, and everyone thinks oh that's the dog that you know the, the Obama's got and I'm like yes. that was a Portuguese one this one's a Spanish one 
Um, uh, and I just thought it'd be interesting to cover a little bit more. So I asked the, the lady that um, was the author of the book to tell me about her water dogs because she's had them all her life. So these are all pictures of her different dogs that she's had over the years. I might adjust people, yeah, to let people know more about the breed because they're a wonderful dog. They're so loyal, intelligent, uh, really bright. I mean, it's a working dog. So, you you know, if you're going to sit home all day with it, they're going to get bored. Um, yeah. they, like, they like walking, they like retrieving. Um, but it's a really old breed. It's over a thousand years old. I mean, they, they were initially pretty much hidden in the Andalusian hillsides for, for many, many years, um, just as a working dog. So they haven't been recognized with Kennel Club. I think it was about 1950 something before they were even recognized as a breed, but they've been around for hundreds of years. So it's... Uh, yeah. And this this lady's dog Squiffy, what a great name for a dog! And this is a little insight, I think, into your life. Um, yes. You re you receive letters from people by the sound of it from all over the world. And in this one, having received your book Cat the Dog as a Christmas present, I have thoroughly enjoyed reading it. In my experience, I found Spanish water dogs to be very sensitive by nature, and once they've gained confidence in their owners, they become our soulmates. Mm -hmm. You get do you get lovely correspondence like that on a regular basis? Yep, all the time. It's one it's one of the real joys of having written a book i had no idea how many people it would interact with because uh, i run a couple of adverts on facebook um, and obviously people can comment on those adverts and i spend at least half an hour every day now replying to each mm. comment with the people. yeah no it's, but it's lovely isn't it and i just i've had people literally say that they've gone and rescued a spanish water dog as a result of reading their book and that to me is the ultimate that's very that's good I, yeah very for sure good. Wonderful. Okay, so we're trying to find a home for Maro um, this uh, yeah. month, aren't we? Uh, male, not yet castrated, 65 um, plus centimetres, 30 kilos. What's the backstory for Maro? I, they, he just got too big for the owner's apartment and they just handed him over to the shelter. But uh, look at that face, though, with those ears. He's beautiful, isn't he's he? He's a lot I mean, like my Jimmy Choo. He's a bit he's a bit shaggier and a bit fuller yeah. in the face, but there's definitely some Jimmy going on yeah. there as well. So Marrow's looking for a home, and this is a feature you run a little spotlight every uh, month uh, for Aiza. Was that the right pronunciation? Aiza. Aiza, Aiza. yeah. Aiza. <laughs> So, yeah, right. so look, I mean, there are kennels and, and, and charities all over the place. So, you know, just pick your local one. You don't, but we always, this is our local um, charity kind of uh, rescue centre. So we like to feature their dogs each month. And I, it's nice to find the story behind some of them are really sad stories. Other people realistically realise they can't give a dog a good home, um, you know, want to give, you know, try and find a better home for them. But yes. uh, yeah, to see dogs, particularly if they've been in the shelter for a long while, um, some of them have been there over a year, two years. Some of them are old and die there and never see a home. It, oh, yeah, it's a that tough must break Schwal's heart, must not it? Because he's, he's, he's probably looking out for all those. Yeah, he would, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> right, Bon Comida. Um, we're looking at um, Bouillon Pato. Now, this is great because um, what we're talking about here is now is the, is the explanation of why this is called, or why it hasn't the word duck in the title. Um, yeah. Nothing to do with duck, but rather steam clams, those flavorful morsels from the sea, the bivalves. Um, mm -hmm. And interestingly, the dish was named after the 19th century Portuguese poet. That's where Pato comes in. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a poet and gastronome, probably before the word gastronome was used commonly. Raimundo Antonio de Bulia Pato. And it isn't that he created the dish or even championed it instead. Um, he, his admirer, Chef Joao de Mata at the Hotel Central de Lisboa, honoured him by naming his new clam creation after the poet. Mm, I like the sound of it. And you can turn it vegan by replacing the clams with whole mushrooms and opting not to add the butter. Delicious. I like the sound of that. If you could have a dish named after you, Ali, what would it be? Oh, I don't know, because my diet's so limited, isn't it? So it probably has to have something gathered with bananas or sweet potatoes in it. I don't know what. <laughs> but uh, I'm not quite sure. Would you like a dish named after you or not? What do you reckon, guys? <laughs> would you? <laughs> I think Fabrizio Nian would, wouldn't mind being immortalised by being uh, having yeah. a dish named after him. What, yeah. what might it be? What's your favourite? Ooh, what do you think? Mine probably will be a pasta dish because I I, I hate cliches. Okay, so <laughs> let's go for it. <laughs> what? And Ian, Ian's going to go with the fish and chips, obviously. After that, yeah, no, probably we we'll get the fish and chips. I'm not sure, actually, that's a good one. We'll think about that. We'll come back to you. On I will as well. I will make maybe later on a tagliatelle Fabrizio. Um, Bravo. Bravo. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have a little competition of name of name of dish after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
All right, thank you <laughs> for that. Uh, onward then, in uh, February, the, this is our preview edition of Snapshot. The How many pages this month, Ali? 118. Is that all? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't quite make 120 this year. Amazing. Never mind. <laughs> Amazing. And a pickleball feature. Yeah. Um, we're talking to Kelly here. Do you, do you play? Uh, how did you come across Kelly? No, she messaged me. Um, obviously, a, a reader and enjoyed it and asked if she could be featured. So I said, of course you can, because um, we like featuring different things. But I had no idea what pickleball was. I'd heard of it. But yeah. I didn't know what it was. Um, so if you want to find out exactly what it is, obviously get hold of the full issue because we she not only do we interview her and find out her favourite things about the Algarve, but she's done a little extra feature for us telling us exactly where it came from, what started it. Um, it's a kind of mix between tennis, badminton and table tennis. It is a great game. I've had a, I've had a little demo game, yeah, with Colin. It was yeah. really good fun, really good fun um, yeah. and easy to play, very accessible. And I think there, yeah, this is the Bourgogne. Um, club that uh, Kelly's part of, Kelly Macuba. Uh, find out more in this month's snapshot. What is this gentleman? This looks like the scene from American Gigolo with Richard Gere as he's choosing to get dressed uh, you know, for the evening. What's going on? I thought you'd enjoy that. Well, obviously, that Rui and Joel, bless them, fag guys practice Portuguese, always let us have a uh, free reign of their, their site every month. So this uh, month, I thought we'd do a little bit about getting dressed and all the different words for clothing. I learned so many new words that I didn't know this month. You'd be surprised. Um, and I always get things like um, calsoige for shorts and calsas for trousers mixed up. So it's amazing oh, for a lot of words that are similar as well, which is uh, it's good to yeah. get them right. So uh, and obviously interspersed with uh, a few nice pictures as well to keep you uh, interested. Good timing. In good timing as well. It's time to get out of the long johns and leggings, isn't it? And all those yeah. wintry things, uh, three dressing gowns and that sort of thing and pick some nice things from the uh, wardrobe. Uh, the bookshelf then. So who are we looking at this month in, in, in the book? This is a good, good smattering of books here. Yeah, lots of lovely memoirs for you this month. And I, yeah. the first one, I'm going to send you the link, Carl. You've got to get this guy on for an interview. Um, okay. he, he lives in the Algarve. Um, Confessions of a Waiter, David Woodward. Um, Woody. Um, it was interesting. Yeah. yeah. It, the subtitle tells you everything. It's the good, the bad, and the downright outrageous side of the hotel industry. He started Excellent. off as a waiter. Ended up running a B&B &B on the Isle of Wight and now living in the Algarve. But, uh, oh, you're really, absolutely right. You've got, he, to he, yeah, we've got to hear his stories. Good guy. He's a good guy, yeah. And um, fashioning and thousands of melon balls uh, to owner of a successful B&B, &B, an entertaining and enlightening read. Yes, definitely. If you could put us yeah. in touch with David, that'd be wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'm, all, yeah. I'm also drawn to Mad Cow Sees Red. What's that about? Oh, well, you can, if you don't mind interviewing somebody that's slightly up in the, the Spanish region, she's in Galicia, and Lisa would be a great person to interview. She's written a whole series of books. They live pretty much off grid, middle of nowhere, tiny little village. It's very like Portugal, actually. Every time I read one of her books or another friend, Lisa, who also lives up there, I'm really reminded of northern Portugal. I don't think there's a lot of difference between Galicia and, mm. and the northern Portugal. Um, very rural lifestyle, lots of chickens, lots of goats, lots of animals. Um, but Lisa's got a, a lovely, amusing way of describing her life up there. So if you want to, if you want to venture slightly above the border, I can get you in touch with her as well. Thank so you. These are great. There's a really good selection here. Of, of, yeah. of, they're, they're travelogues, aren't they? Essentially, so uh, wonderful people's people's travels yeah. and lives uh, are documented there, including Billy Connolly and Route 66. There, yeah. top ten books of 23 and cake. That's a good combination, isn't it? I can I can see because you, you described to us, didn't you? You were the little part of your house where you like to sit with a book in the sunshine. Um, and um, we've got um, a thank you in in the form of cake here. What's going on here? Chocolate well, we brownie. Do yeah, well, I, I never charge anything for Snapshot, even though it, hours of work every month. I love doing it. But we just put a little Kofi on there. So if people want to actually say thank you, um, they can they can drop us. Uh, we always say if you want to drop a two euro kind of coffee and a cake uh, donation, that would be great. Uh, but we always get enough every month usually to go out for, for lunch, which is nice. But the, I can't eat cake, obviously. So these are all Dave's delights. Um, <laughs> but we discovered we didn't realize we've got a lovely cafe in the winter who do a really nice chocolate brownie, top picture there. Um, mm. A bless of the waitress sees Very us coming, good. and she goes into the back kitchen and brings out a new, still warm 
cake and cuts of it for him rather than the one that's been in the in the display for the day bless her sounds great, um, sounds great. So what's the link for that so that people can can uh, help you um well, if you yeah if you sub yeah if you subscribe or if you if you read the edition there's a there's a link at the back of each edition and there's a link for subscribers just on the bottom of the email I don't make a big thing of it but it's just that it's no, a, so, so many people send us nice messages yeah it's a nice yeah. way of saying thank you so uh, why not why not why not buy uh, Ali and Dave a nice uh, cup of coffee and a bit of cake yeah. um, Pickleball, Bainbridge Island, 1965. Is that when it was invented or, or, or when the first game was played? OLP, thank you very much. Antonio, encouraging everyone to hit that uh -huh. like button. As we're just slipping past 10 o'clock, uh, we mm -hmm. need to get on our way and make our way into uh, Thursday. So there you go. Make it That's how you can get your copy and uh, do the do the right thing and uh, buy a coffee and a bit of cake uh -huh. and maybe that can extend as you say there, Ali, to a bit of lunch as well once a month for all the work that you put into mm -hmm. a wonderful snapshot magazine. So, final words and thank you for being here and um, sharing uh, our preview. I, I I hasten to add and reiterate that this is a section, a selection from the the, the magazine. And there's over 100 pages every month that you create there. So you can get your full your full version at uh, alisonsheldrake.com forward slash news there. Please do that. And yes, Pickleball was invented in Bainbridge Island in 1965. It was a very good year. Uh, final words then from you. What are you laughing at? <laughs> no, no, I don't remember that, was there? Okay. <laughs> oh, what's happened there? I've lost people off the screen. No, okay. sorry, I wasn't offended. I just pressed the wrong button. Um, okay, so final words then. Oh, and we have got um, a question for you about condominiums. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll come back to you for a final word in just a moment, Ali. Let's get some final, maybe condominium-related words from uh, Fabrizio and Ian. Uh, how many units in your condo building after all? And why, the, why is the word condom in condominium? You don't have to answer that right now. <laughs> Seems like that's not the question OLP is asking. No, no, no. <laughs> so no, 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 Seems like the more residents would make decisions harder. Is that the is that what you would say? No, we, have, you? Um, we have 11 plus two shops. Oh, really? Thank wow, you. okay, yeah. right, that's a complex little mix there, okay, yeah, and yeah. I guess. I mean, um, it's right. The point OLP is making: the more people in that mix, perhaps the more difficult it is to make decisions. Yeah, I think it no, depends. Think some it depends of them they were quite all together, and some others they, yeah. they are open to debate. And then you think that the the harder decision will take most of the evening, and it takes twenty two seconds point five. And then for for some, you know, yeah. for that piece of paper that has been found in the lobby, we yeah. go up till four o'clock in the morning. People <laughs> die. <laughs> People's dogs barking, you know. So, uh, who knows? Yeah, there's okay. a mystery of life. All there's right. a beautiful metaphor about life in general. Yeah. It's not for the faint hearted, by the sound of it. No, okay. no, so, get, get your drugs ready, get, get all this stuff. Yeah. Not so deep yeah. thoughts um, before we come to your final thoughts. Uh, maybe the good things that come to those who wait are the leftovers of those who got there first. Maybe. Uh, not so deep thought number two. Why do croutons come in air seal packaging? Aren't they just stale bread already? Yes. And um, not so deep thought three. If a cemetery raises its burial costs, can they, in all good conscience, blame it on the cost of living? Very good, as you are know, you see. T Duck turns his back for a moment. and, and fight, yeah. Yeah, We don't like a vacuum. Gumpers don't like a vacuum. So, um, maybe a last uh, thought from you, Fabrizio and Ian. We were t starting to talk about, um, you know, some of the uh, other sides of immigrant life, uh, uh, foreigners, expat life. Uh, anything to add to that? And maybe, uh, and I hope you'll come back and talk more about condominiums in the future. As, as a closing quote. Yeah. yeah. Well, any frustration you go through, you come on the other hand, and you learn something. So, you know, at the end yes. of the day, it's good, good All right. yeah. Exactly. It's very nice, philosophical. If, if it doesn't kill you, it'll make you stronger by the sound That's of it. it. <laughs> <laughs> and if it falls on the floor, count to three, you can still pick it up and eat it. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. I'll remember that when I'm making my tagliatelle, Fabrizio. That's Ian, it. what about you? Uh, well, similar, similar thing, really. It's about saying, you know, what, what goes around comes around, realistically. You know what I mean? You'll always sort of, you know, you'll. You'll think you'll see a problem at one percent, and you'll probably reinvent it, you know, revisit it again. But you'll learn something from it. So very good. Thank you. Look forward to a lesson rather than a pain, painful experience. 
Yes, and it gets better, doesn't it? It kind of it kind of gets worse and better all at the same time, doesn't it? You know, exactly. <laughs> it's an evolution, evolution. Thank you so much, you two, for being here. And over to you, Ali. Uh, some words from the south of the country, where the light is returning lighter, longer mm. days. Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, it feels good just to get that sun. It's just, uh, it, yeah, it's the light. I, I just think the other day I thought it's six o'clock and it's still light. Oh, that, was, that was a really nice moment of realising the days are getting longer again, which is fabulous. So, yeah. Good Here's to those longer days. Don't forget to get your copy of Snapshot online from the link um, that we were giving earlier on. And we'll put it in the sleeve notes too. It is already in the sleeve notes if you want your copy of Snapshot. Have a lovely day all. And uh, we'll see you soon. You and if you want to learn about US expat taxes, join me tonight at 7.30 and for the Dream Team session at nine o'clock. Take care. Bye for now. We'll see you all. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Bom dia, Portugal. In Portugal, there's a YouTube show full of fun facts you need to know. Carl brings a bell Guests will come and they will blow your mind. The audience will do so in kind. The little vanity mixed with some insanity on the morning show with GMP. Good morning, Portugal, and I'd like to welcome you to another fantastic day. Hey, you gumpers.